Fort Ateno, the fort that stood, one of the most crucial but also neglected locations in Breath of the Wild. Yes, this was where Link fell and Zelda awakened her power, and it is a symbol of Hylian salvation. Already before the calamity, it was beside Hyrule Castle and Town, Hyrule Garrison, the Great Plateau and Akala Citadel among the most important military strongholds in the Kingdom of Hyrule. But when it mattered most, it was its design which made the difference and made it possible for it to hold its high ground against the corrupted Guardian army. But why? Well in this Breath of the Wild theory, together with Hyrule Gamer, we'll answer this question and also try to detail the likely dark origins of this fort using creating a champion and the ancient tapestry and through them explain its likely origin and how it changed Nekluda, the Sheikah homeland forever. So be sure to leave a like to make this video visible for more people, subscribe to the Commonwealth Realm and Hyrule Gamer and let's not waste any more time and get into the meat of this theory. The short answer to the question at hand can be divided into three. The first one being that it was the only fort which had advantageous terrain, mostly thanks to the dueling peaks which caused a massive clog up of guardians at the narrow road resulting in many ways in a dual defensive line in Nekluda. Then you had the fanatic defense and sacrifice of the Hylian forces and the Hatena militia which was stationed at the fort, each ready to lay down the life for the Hylian race and the Hylian settlement standing behind them, Hatena. Though they would have certainly all have fallen right here if it wasn't for Link's guardian slaughter on his way and Princess Zelda's awakening at Blatchery Plain. Everyone and everything including the mountain and the fort did their part and combined they ended Ganon's advance during the Great Calamity. The long answer however ties to the purpose of the fort itself, as unlike other military strongholds of the Kingdom of Hyrule, it is unclear why this massive defensive wall was built in the first place and why it was designed to defend from an inner eastern point against outer western attacks, protecting Heiteno village and not central Hyrule. Standing in stark contrast to all other defensive points in Hyrule, which were built to defend from an eastern and southern coastal invasion, and preventing these from reaching central Hyrule and Hyrule Castle. But in order to understand the the full history of the fort and its construction, which combined with Zelda's awakening would save the Hylian race from complete extinction, we have to go back to the beginning and to the state of the land of Hyrule before the previous calamity 10,000 years ago. All races under the leadership of the Hylians and using the technology of the Sheikah united. A miracle during a time when the land was divided into provinces ruled by each individual tribe. In the west, we had the Gerudo and the Rita of Hebron. In the centre and northeast, the Hylians, and in the east, at least the Gorons and Zora. The Gorons had Elden, the Zora Laneru, and the Sheikah, possibly Nekluda, though it isn't certain. You see, Nekluda is a province that stretches from west of the eastern shores of Hylia River in the west and to the Nekluda Sea in the east. Here, some of the sophisticated Sheikah may have resided, emphasis on some as it is clear that 10,000 years ago, most, if not all Sheikah, lived in central Hyrule, within the walls of Hyrule Castle Town and even Hyrule Castle itself. No doubt, the ancient Sheikah and the Kingdom of Hyrule were close allies, as the Sheikah lived among the Hylians and were under a divine duty to serve the continued blood of the reincarnated goddess Hylia and her people. Through the royal family, the Sheikah also maintained close and friendly relations with the divine beast pilot nations. The Zora Kingdom of Laneru, which piloted Varuta, the Gorons of Elden and Varudania, the Rito of Hebra and Var Meadow, and finally the female Gerudo and Var Naboris. With the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero of that generation, they pulled off a spectacular victory against Calamity Ganon, but when peace settled, the Sheikah became the threat. We all know what happened, as creating a champion states. The King of Hyrule became possessed by the thoughts of imagined Sheikah betrayal, and issued an order to abolish technology and began to oppress the Sheikah. The Sheikah laboratories were closed, research was prohibited, and data was destroyed. Their best researchers were expelled from the kingdom and monitored. Any Sheikah who dared oppose the order was met with severe punishment and imprisonment. This oppression led to dramatic changes within the Sheikah tribe, and ultimately to a division of two factions, moderates and militants. The event is also told through illustrations on the bottom of the Sheikah tapestry detailing the ancient battle. The King of Hyrule's fixation on the Sheikah backed by the angers of the Hylians, making it possible to mobilise forces to expulse the Sheikah out of Hyrule Castle Town. Homeless and betrayed by the Hylians, the moderates blamed themselves and saw this as another trial from Goddess Hylia in the mission to serve 
her and her blood, a divine priority above the honor of their tribe, while the radicals wanted to strike back through the original dark speciality of the Sheikah, assassinations. This schism of the Sheikah tribe sent the moderate faction east, where they built a hidden village, the later Kakariko village. Here they settled down and began to live simple lives as farmers while hiding away some of their research. The militant group, however, blamed fully the Hylians and resisted, primarily by disguising themselves as Hylians to get close enough to assassinate high-ranking Hylians, an activity which forced them out into Gerudo territory. This group eventually reformed into the Yiga clan and cursed the Sheikah moderates in Kakariko for betraying their tribe and surrendering to the Hylians. The Kakariko Sheikah may have gained peace, but was still not trusted by the Hylians, who controlled the rest of Nekluda, and effectively prevented Sheikah activity outside of Kakariko as Hylian settlers populated the province all the way to the Nekluda Sea. Due to the militant Yiga faction, the Hylians couldn't trust the Kakariko Shika either, and likely saw as their duty to protect the main trade route from Hyro Castle along the Great Plateau, to West Nakluda, and finally, Heitano, next to the Nakluda Sea. From a military and economic point of view, the coastal Heitano brought two necessities, security and commerce. Or more specifically, securing a trade route to the village from central Hyrule, and the construction of a defensive line protecting eastern Nakluda from the Shika. The Hylians likely strengthened the military grip over the province by constructing Fort Hateno at the edge of Blatchery Plain to protect the Hylians of Hateno village. Thus, unlike the other defensive lines of the Kingdom of Hyrule, Fort Hateno would not defend from threats and invaders coming from outside of Hyrule like say Akala Citadel did, but internal ones the Sheikah of Kakariko and the militant counterpart. Much like Arbiter's Grounds in the Gerudo Desert in the Era of Twilight following Ganondorf's invasion and banishment in the Child Timeline, Fort Ateno is a symbol of Hylian domination, occupation and subjugation of the Sheikah, keeping them locked in the hidden village, isolated from the rest of Hyrule. A possible threat which made sense after forcing a once prosperous, united and by far most intelligent and advanced tribe of Hyrule to its current primitive state of agriculture culture and assassinations. For up to 10,000 years, this state of divided Hylian and Sheikah civilization continued until the Kingdom of Hyrule, under the reign of King Rome, reached a handout to the Sheikah of Kakariko, when the fortune teller in the castle warned him of the incoming resurrection of Calamity Ganon. Though by that point, Fort Heitano remained fully operational, and with the threat of Calamity Ganon from Hyrule Castle, became one of the two most important points of resistance in Eastern Hyrule. If the young Princess Zelda was unable to awaken her power in time, and Hyrule Castle and town would fall. Princess Zelda's struggle to unlock her ceiling power made it clear that a main evacuation route of Hylian civilians to Eteno was necessary, and that Fort Eteno had to be held no matter what, for the sake of survival of the Hylians, as this fort, unlike Akala, was purposely built to defend from western attacks. The height of the fortress supports this claim, as it was meant to ward off other people from reaching Hateno, and then specifically their closest neighbour, the Sheikah of Kakariko, and the militant Sheikah that might be hiding within the ranks. Thus, during the Great Calamity, it didn't become a death trap like Akala, and managed thanks to Link's destruction of many of the approaching Guardians, and at the massive sacrifice of its defenders, to prevent the Guardians from breaching through the fort and target the civilians of Hateno village and the Hylian refugees from central Hyrule. Then came salvation in the form of Princess Zelda's awakening. But without the fanatic defense of Fort Ateno, the Hylian civilization would have perished on that fateful day and night of Zelda's 17th birthday 100 years ago. In many ways, the salvation was mutual. Without Fort Ateno, Link and Zelda would have certainly both fallen, and thanks to the princess and the Hylian champion, the heavily damaged Fort Ateno remained standing and fulfilled its duty of defending Hateno village from a western threat thus setting the stage for the Age of Burning Fields where, ironically, Robbie, a Sheikah scientist like the ones who were expelled, would 40 to 50 years later with his newly designed weapon, the Ancient Arrow, set his aim for the walls to destroy the guardians surrounding the fort and open the path to Hylian reclamation of Hyrule. And that is the theory of darkness 10,000 years ago turned into light 100 years ago, all tied to the mystery and secret of Fort Hateno. 
A symbol of possible Hylian domination over the Sheikah eventually turned into a symbol of salvation for the Hylian race and in the village where the new Sheikah lab under the command of genius eccentric Pura would restore some of what was lost following the destruction of the royal ancient lab during the Great Calamity. And that is why 4810 is so special and important, not only to Nakluta, but all of Hyrule. A relic that represents the good, the bad, and possibly even the ugly history of Hyrule in the last 10,000 plus 100 years. If you enjoy this theory, then be sure to press that like button and share it to make it more visible. And if you're hungry for more, subscribe to my channel, The Commonwealth Realm and Hyrule Gamer, who joined me for this video. In return, we're covering what Breath of the Wild 2 needs to fix on his channel, so check it out in the end card. Finally, a big thanks for making this theory possible goes to our patreon.com slash common realm patrons and in particular to our royal producer Charles Shash. And to all of you, go and check out the collaboration on Hyrule Gamers channel and our Discord server, which is now live.